Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, SpaceX scores two launches and landings over one weekend. Sean Tucker says he'll retire from solo performing next year. FAA and WS announce important change to CONUS text area forecasts. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's June 27th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX, in the midst of a greatly accelerated launch pace, put two Falcon 9 payloads into orbit, one of which was a reused first stage, and then landed two first stage boosters off opposite coasts. On June 23, 2017, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket successfully launched the Bulgaria Sat 1 satellite into orbit, the first geostationary communications satellite in Bulgaria's history. This mission marked the second reflight of a Falcon 9 first stage, having previously supported the Iridium 1 mission from Vandenberg Air Force Base in January of this year. Following stage separation, the first stage of Falcon 9 successfully landed on SpaceX's East Coast drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, stationed in the Atlantic Ocean, under what were termed to be challenging conditions. On Sunday, June 25th at 1.25 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket successfully launched 10 satellites to low Earth orbit for Iridium, a global leader in mobile voice and data satellite communications. This is the second set of 10 satellites in a series of 75 total satellites that SpaceX will launch for Iridium's next-generation global satellite constellation, Iridium Next. Following staging, the first stage of Falcon 9 successfully landed on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship stationed in the Pacific Ocean, despite challenging weather conditions. Shondi Tucker is one of the best-known names on the airshow circuit, and for good reason. He has flown on the circuit for 40 years, racking up more than 26,000 hours in the cockpit. He currently flies the Oracle Challenger 3 when performing at air shows, an airplane that may one day soon hang in the Smithsonian. This past weekend, Tucker said that he'll be retiring for solo flying next year. Having just turned 65, he said it's time to look at the next phase of his air show career. Tucker has made it clear he's not retiring from flying. He is currently looking for a sponsor that will help him launch a formation flying team. Tucker began flying at 17 and earned his private pilot certificate at age 21. He began learning aerobatics in 1973 and flew his first air show three years later. Tucker is currently the chairman of EAA's Young Eagles program and has started the Bob Hoover Academy, an alternative education high school in Salinas, California, focusing on STEM disciplines. After the break, FAA says that changes are coming to area forecasts. The Bristel Light Sport aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Progressive Aerodyne's C-Ray Elite offers turbocharged Rotax power and Garmin G3X touch avionics. Incredibly well equipped, you can fly away in this best in category Amphib for less than $160,000. Visit CRA.com for more details. Welcome back. The FAA and the National Weather Service have been working jointly to retire the six Econis Text Area forecast while also directing users to utilize finer resolution graphical and digital weather forecast products. The Conus FAs are a suite of products that cover very large geographical areas, have limited text size, cannot account for certain meteorological conditions, and are updated only three times a day. Several NWS digital and graphical products are available today that provide the same weather forecast information found in the Conus FA but with much finer resolution in both space and time. These digital and graphical products provide users much improved weather forecast information. A transition period of three months begins July 10th, where all the NWS products will be available. Production of the Conus Tex FAs will cease October 10th. 
Only the Conus FAs are affected, other FAs will continue to be produced until further notice. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. It's less than a month to Oshkosh, and among the more interesting happenings we're looking forward to is the appearance of Skeld Composites. The amazing effort behind legendary airplanes such as Spaceship One, Proteus, and Strata Launch. They have announced an exciting forum schedule for Oshkosh. We thought maybe the best way that we can interact with the EAA community is to share some of this knowledge that we get not only in our day jobs, but also in our weekends and evenings when we're working on our own aircraft, said Bob Withrow, Skeld's Vice President of Engineering. It's really exciting, for example, for our test pilots to give tips and tricks to people who are going to be flying the airplane they just got through building the first time. Skeld will hold a total of 40 forum sessions, each of them more than an hour in length. There are expected to be six Skeld forums each day from Monday, July 24th to Saturday, July 29th, and four forums on Sunday, July 30th. After these messages, AEVSI speaks out on House Bill. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. AUVSI President and CEO Brian Wynn has commented on the drone-relevant portions of the House FAA bill. The provisions for UAS in the House version of the FAA reauthorization bill represent a strong and sustained commitment for the growth of the commercial UAS in the United States. The bill calls for UAS initiatives that would build upon the work that industry has already been engaged with NASA and the FAA, particularly the section that mandates rulemaking for a UAS traffic management system. The Air Force recently announced the recipients of the 2016 Air Force Fighter Annual Awards. The award is designed to recognize fighter pilots and weapons systems officers' commitment, performance, and leadership in aviation skills that were instrumental to mission success of their units at the U.S. Air Force and the Defense Department. The Board of Directors of Marinco Swiss Helicopter welcomes Solar Impulse pilot Andre Buschberg as a new member. Andre will join the board as a non-executive director and begin immediately, subject to confirmation at MSH's next shareholders meeting in July. The man who was once the manager of the South St. Paul Airport in Minnesota has pleaded guilty to six felonies in Dakota County District Court. Glenn C. Burke pleaded guilty to four felony counts of theft by temporary control and two felony counts of theft by swindle in the case. One count of theft by swindle was dismissed. FAI has issued an invitation to attend the first FAI International Drones Conference in Lausanne, Switzerland. From September 1st through 3rd, 2017, the event will focus on innovation, safety, and sports. The conference and expo are part of the EPFL Drone Dates 2017. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Many in the aviation world think criminalizing a tragic mistake is unwise, but police say that a criminal investigation of Andrew Hill, who was flying a vintage Hawk Hunter jet that went down at the Shoreham Air Show in 2015, is about 95% complete. 11 people on the ground were fatally injured when the plane went down, but Hill somehow survived. Now he faces charges of manslaughter by gross negligence. According to Detective Superintendent Adam Hibbert of Sussex Police, initial file is now being drawn up, and I can confirm that process is underway. 
We continue to talk with the families and I'm extremely grateful for their continued support and patience in what continues to be upsetting circumstances for them all. Hibbert said that he conservatively estimates that some 25,000 documents have been entered into a database for the inquiry. Hill is said to be cooperating with the police. The UK AAIB said in its final report on the accident released in March that Hill was flying too low and too slow for the maneuver he was attempting. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.